This image is one of the most remembered in the past decade. Noé Hernández was a total unknown at that moment in the 20-kilometer march Sydney 2000. Getting there for Noé was a survival sacrifice. Giving my mother a lie that I already had a room in the Olympic Pinto, which I obviously didn't, right? And realizing that it was getting dark and I didn't really know where to stay, well, obviously it's better to be under a story. We are in the middle of... It's the Olympic season and this time the event is taking place in Paris. Thousands of athletes have lived this unique experience representing their countries in various disciplines. To this day, many continue to be a source of inspiration for young athletes around the world who want to follow in their footsteps. Thus, amidst the difficulties of a country affected by violence and famine, suffering can be transformed into determination and energy to achieve a goal, to bring home an Olympic medal. In Mexico, athletes have emerged who, despite the challenges, have tirelessly fought for their dreams until they achieved the coveted medal in the Olympic Games, thus achieving glory and the greatest achievement an athlete can obtain. However, while some athletes managed to cross the finish line, others faced tragic fates. One of them was struck by misfortune when he was at the best moment of his life, another young man full of promises and hopes. He didn't even get the chance to showcase his talent and pursue his dream. So here's the question, what happened to these athletes? Well, I'm going to tell you in this video. The famous athlete Martin was born on July 22, 2001 in Chihuahua. Although he specialized in athletics, his debut in the world of sports was boxing. But an injury due to this discipline is what led him to seek another activity, changing his life forever. When he was in high school, he was invited to compete in his school's athletics tournament. It was then that his love for this sport began. Time passed, he graduated from high school and began his studies at the Autonomous University of Ciudad Juarez in business administration. Even so, Martin did not stop running and reaped several successes at his young age. He won a medal at the Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games in the year 2018. In the 2018 National Olympics, he won two gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter flat races in the 16-17 year old category, which led him to be recognized as the fastest athlete of that sports meeting. Martin was also part of the Chihuahua delegation in the under 18 and under 20 National Youth Athletics Championship. In addition, he was one of the selected to participate in the Under-20 Pan-American Championship held in San Jose, Costa Rica and for the North American, Central American and Caribbean Athletic Association which took place in Puecente, Acapulco, Singas, Esi, Paresas, Lentas, Queretaro. At that time, the young athlete had been recognized by the state governor, Javier Corral Jurado, through his ex-account in which he thanked him for his performance in athletics. This is what he said. Thanks to your mindset and perseverance, you put the name of Chihuahua twice at the top of the National Olympiad podium. I congratulate you for being one of the most promising athletes in the state. And it was true that he was one of the most promising. Martin was building a great career that was inevitably going to take him to play in the upcoming Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Tomorrow in Chihuahua, he would compete to rank in the state's top 12. And that's how he was preparing this week. However, he wouldn't make it to run in this competition or any other because his dream would be unexpectedly shattered. His goal of someday winning an Olympic medal vanished on the afternoon of January 9, 2020. Martin had left his house in his truck to the center. That day, the young man had to withdraw some money that was important for his future as an athlete. He had been given a sports scholarship for his great performance. However, he would never get to use it. The young man approached a branch of Banco Santander and withdrew 50,000 Mexican pesos. Then he got back in the car and drove around the vicinity of a shopping center at the intersection of Plutarco, Elias Cales and Insurgentes Avenues, unaware that death was following him very closely. And that's because while he was driving calmly back to his house, because his mother was waiting for him to eat, Martin noticed that a vehicle had been following him for several blocks. Nervous about having a large sum of money with him, he tried to lose it in the streets of the unit. To his dismay, he didn't manage to and the other car caught up with him. The athlete saw from his rearview mirror how a person got out of his vehicle and quickly approached. He didn't have time to react when the criminal broke his window glass. 
The criminal had only one goal, as you can imagine, to steal his wallet with his scholarship money. Seeing his future being snatched from his hands, unfortunately, the young man tried to prevent the theft, which he should never have done, but the criminal shot him twice. One of the impacts of a 9mm bullet entered one of his lungs and seriously injured him. This is Martin Alejandro Loera Trujillo, an 18-year-old Olympic medalist who was surprised at this place with a direct firearm attack. The Chihuahua State Prosecutor's Office is reviewing security cameras, collecting testimonies and witness accounts of the attack. A woman saw the whole scene and tried to approach to help the young man who was agonizing inside his car. But the criminal, without a shred of compassion, threatened her with the weapon to keep her away. Fearing for her life, she had to leave and call the police. By the time the authorities arrived at the horrific scene, Martin, a boy of just 18 years old with his whole life ahead of him, had already lost his life. Neither his friends nor his family could believe the sudden end of a young man who still had a long life ahead of him. And all for a few measly pesos. The Autonomous University of Ciudad Juarez paid tribute to the business administration student and medal-winning athlete Martin Alejandro Loera Trujillo, who was murdered on Thursday afternoon in a shopping plaza in Ciudad Juarez. At the tribute to her mother, Laura Elena Trujillo Rodriguez gave some words filled with pain to the media. Martin was the number one. He's the number one in my heart, in the hearts of many people. There's not going to be anyone like him because he's an exemplary son. He's the best thing God gave me. She also demanded justice to find those responsible for the monster who had taken her son's life. The investigators arrived at the robbery hypothesis thanks to the witness who saw everything. However, they could not confirm it with the security cameras of the place due to they were not working. How did the criminal know that Martin had that amount of money? And it was not the first time that a crime like this has occurred in this country. Robberies at the exit of banks had begun to be common among criminals looking for easy money. To everyone's surprise, the staff of Banco Santander, where Martin withdrew his money, were not under investigation and prosecutor Naval Lopez asked the media not to speculate on this matter. My son was at the bank at Banco Santander, which is on Lopez Mateos, because he made his transactions there. From there at 3.30 in the afternoon, he goes with his mom because she invited him to eat. They got there following them from a van. They fired two shots. We don't know where one bullet fell. A single bullet hit my son in this area and shattered his lungs. After days of investigation by analysts, field forensic experts and the prosecutor's intelligence group, they were able to identify the possible perpetrator of this tragic event, Ruben H. E., 21 years old, who was charged with aggravated homicide. On January 19th, he was finally arrested and gave a statement that left everyone chilled. Ruben claimed to be innocent of the crime as they had been friends since they were children. However, at least three witnesses identified him as the person who fired the weapon at the young athlete. Why then had Ruben taken his friend's life? The hypothesis of jealousy over Martin's success began to circulate in the media. But nothing was officially said about this theory. After two years of struggle, the trial for Martin Loera's murder finally began in March 2022. At the hearing, the State Attorney General's office announced that sufficient evidence had been presented to convict Ruben for what he had done for the crime, and finally the judge ordered that the defendant should pay 927,800 pesos to the deceased's family for the concept of damage repair. On the other hand, while everyone was eagerly awaiting the much-desired conviction, the criminal was finally found guilty of the murder of Martin and was sentenced to 28 years in prison, which he will have to serve at the Social Reintegration Center No. 3 in Ciudad Juarez. Although justice was served, the sadness that overwhelmed his loved ones can never be fully repaired. We all know that. Martin was taken from his dreams at a very young age, a young man full of aspirations and goals. He dreamed of competing in the Olympics, winning a gold medal and bringing it home. But unfortunately, those opportunities were denied to him.
While Martin's case left an entire country devastated, there was another case years ago that shocked an entire country that still mourns his death. And this is the story of the race walker Noé Hernández Valentín. It was the story of many Mexican athletes who rose to the top from humble neighborhoods and thanks to their dedication managed to excel and achieve sporting glory. But unfortunately, his story has a sad ending. He literally had no money to survive. And I was leaving one way or another in the report from Yuxer's room. That report was going to get me out of something, right? They didn't really get you out of here, did they? How did I realize the true magnitude of what I was doing? Because I had to survive daily. And surviving means you eat daily. And sure, you have a corner where you can sleep. Noah, or El Chivo, as his friends called him, was born in 1978 in Chimalhuacan, state of Mexico. His beginnings were in poverty, as he was born into a low-income family, being the second to last of four siblings. Since he didn't have the toys that other children his age could buy, he found sport to be the best form of entertainment. At 12 years old, he discovered his first passion in football. My family and everyone who lives here, we have been happy. There were only about some here, six or seven houses. And going up there were no houses, there was a vacant lot, and we used it as a track for everyone. He joined the Toros Neza team, where he had the opportunity to debut. But after a while, they asked him for money to continue playing professionally. He didn't even have money to eat, let alone to pay someone to debut him in the major leagues, so he ended up quitting. Because of this difficulty, Noe decided to swap the ball for race walking. When one of his high school physical education teachers invited him to watch a demonstration of this sport, he was fascinated, especially when his teacher taught him to enjoy the walk, to turn suffering into energy because of the great effort that was being made. At 14 years old, he had to start working to help his family. In the mornings, he sold styrofoam figures of animated characters at traffic lights in Mexico City and did masonry work where he charged only 50 pesos. However, he never put aside sports. In the afternoons and in his free time, he trained in race walking at school and when he couldn't, he did it in the vacant lots near his house as if they were athletics tracks. His perseverance and discipline was so great that he managed to enter the Mexican Olympic Sports Center. In 1997, he had his first chance to compete internationally in Apodaca, Nuevo León. This is obviously in Mexico, where two years later he got his ticket to the Central American and Caribbean Athletics Championship in Bridgetown on the island of Barbados, where he took the gold medal. So much effort and always dreaming big, took him to the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games in Australia. However, he was almost like a stranger to his own country. He was the third member of the Mexican walking team behind Bernardo Segura, who had been a medalist four years earlier in 96 in Atlanta, and Daniel Garcia, who had won gold at the World Athletics Championships in Athens in 97. From anonymity to becoming a global figure in this difficult sport? I don't know. I don't know. When none of the walking athletics experts even gave him a small chance of making it in cinema, but Noe left everyone speechless. On the 21st of September of the new millennium, in the 20-kilometer race, he became a figure in national sports. With a low profile and a calm demeanor, he gradually moved ahead among the other competitors who had a better chance of winning and crossed the finish line in third place. The young man, who no one had faith in, climbed onto the podium, first with the bronze medal, but when his teammate Segura was admonished, disqualified, and had his medal taken away, he achieved second place behind a pole and ahead of a Russian. No story didn't end anywhere near that great victory or satisfaction. But no history?
because in the memory of Mexicans, he is remembered for crying emotionally when he communicated by telephone and on national television with his parents from Sydney to Shimaluakan, to whom he dedicated that greatest achievement. But now what I promised to my son, 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 to my son. To step onto the podium. Not only had he managed to step onto the podium, he also defeated hunger and deprivation from earning 500 pesos to earning 50 times more, from being an unknown face to having 2,000 friends. Everyone knew him as one of the great figures of Mexican sports, but no one never forgot his roots. In his mind, he always kept those who believed in him from the beginning, which were his family and his coach. That was the last time the Mexican race walking reached the Olympic podium in the 20-kilometer event. Three years later, at the World Athletics Championship in Paris, France, the Mexican race walker narrowly missed the bronze medal, finishing in fourth place with a time of 1 hour 18 minutes and 14 seconds, the best of his career. In 2004, he participated in the Tijuana Grand Prix, where due to an injury he finished in 19th place, then to finally show his quality at the International Walking Week in Ciudad Victoria, Tamaulipas, with a time of 1 minute 20.32 that qualified him for the Athens Olympics, where he was later disqualified. However, despite his bad luck, he was chosen as the flag bearer in the sports parade of November 20th of the year 2004, which commemorated the 94th anniversary of the Mexican Revolution. According to some experts in this sport, the main problem for the athlete so that his career has been up and down was the constant breaking of relationships he had with different coaches since he won the Australian silver. He was trained in Sydney by Pedro Aroche, but without knowing the exact reasons they stopped working together and Noe decided that his wife Vianne Pedraza would be the one to direct his training. This decision provoked a myriad of negative comments towards the walker, especially doubts were raised about his wife's ability as a coach. Then, in 2002, Adrian Navarro joined the team as head coach, who, in addition to having trained the also Atlanta Olympic medalist Bernardo Segura, was an international walking judge. However, he then decided to go with Miguel Angel Sanchez. Noe returned with Aroch and was followed by Jesus Martinez in 2005. The outlook for the athlete was unfavorable. After an injury and recovering from a knee surgery that kept him inactive for almost two years, he returned to training. He felt strong and confident enough to qualify for the Beijing Olympics in 2008. But his expectations did not allow him to achieve this dream. It was then that Noe Hernandez retired without winning anything big again. After this disappointment, he got into politics with the Institutional Revolutionary Party, the Institutional Revolutionary Party at the state level, where he worked in the area in charge of sports in his beloved municipality of Chimalhuacan, with the clear objective of inspiring young people and supporting them so that they had an opportunity in the sport that had cost him so much in his origins. But unfortunately, his dreams were numbered and the country's sports legend would have a tragic end that would leave everyone desolate. More than 12 years after his great success in Sydney, on the night of December 30th, 2012, he was at the bar La Reina de los Reyes, located in La Paz, state of Mexico, when he was shot in the skull after a shootout in which two people died. He was quickly rushed to the hospital in the municipality of Aragon, where he underwent various surgical interventions to reconstruct the frontal base of his skull. Due to the impact, he had lost his left eyeball and more than 70% of the vision in his right eye. After fighting between life and death on January 2, 2013, he woke up from the induced coma he was subjected to. The doctor who attended him, Carlos Castillo Rangel, affirmed that the medalist moved his body's limbs perfectly and obeyed the indications of the specialists who attended him. His evolution was surprising and besides, he proved that he was a person who never gave up. The medalist ate, bathed himself and walked around the hospital. So on January 8th of the year 2013, he was discharged from the clinic. 
As you can see, all was going well. Nuevo returned home to his wife and two daughters in the Xochiaca neighborhood in Chimalhuacan and continued with his life. However, fate had other plans for him again. On January 16th of the year 2013, the world champion was found unconscious in his home due to a cardiopulmonary arrest. The doctors unsuccessfully tried to resuscitate him. At 12.15, the life of an Olympic medalist, an athlete who always fought for his dreams and still had a world ahead of him, was extinguished. At noon, a tribute was paid to Noe Hernandez at the Mexican Olympic Committee. The heads of the Committee Olympic Mexican Carlos Padilla and the National Sports Commission Jesus Mena attended, along with Mexican sports greats like Bernardo Segura, Ernesto Cantos, Soraya Jimenez, and Carlos Mercenario. Four years after the crime, a judge sentenced Medina Martin to 70 years for the death of Noe Hernandez and two other people. In addition, both murderers should pay a fine of 5,000 minimum wage days, which are 136,502 pesos as compensation for the damage to the victims' families. In in 2016, in his honor, the municipality of Chimalhuacan inaugurated an Olympic swimming pool with his name with an investment of 66 million pesos in order to promote sport. An entire country obviously mourned his premature death and remembered those times of his youth when he was a young man with many dreams and also many obstacles. While he left a void in the world of sports, he also left a great legacy, showing that anyone can achieve their dreams, no matter how difficult they seem, if you fight for them. The life of Noe Hernandez, Valentin and Martin Loera was brief, but their names have left an indelible mark on the history of Olympic sport in Mexico. Although sadly various talents have been extinguished prematurely, the legacy of these athletes endures. Their trajectory, marked by effort, passion, and sacrifice, will continue to be remembered and celebrated as a testament to their contribution to sport and the country's Olympic identity. Through their achievements and sacrifices, they have left an indelible mark that will continue to inspire future generations of athletes. I also upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays on my other channel Many More Mysteries. They cover similar topics but in a compilation format of shorter videos. 